Greetings! It's 2021 and why is it already an exciting year? Anyway, um, many of you have already thought of uh, resolutions or if you're like me and you don't like the idea of resolutions, then you call them goals. <laughs> so one of my goals that I have planned for this year is that I would like to dive a little bit deeper into the therapeutic dimensions of art and then I would like to share them with you. So this is my plan. I will be posting therapeutic art lessons that will be a series of uh, thematic videos that will be uploaded weekly. And every couple weeks I will change the theme and every theme will end with an integrated art project. So you're free to follow my instructions exactly or you can wing it depending on how you feel. The point here is to work through your feelings and your thoughts and not just a, a series of directives. I, I think it's important to add here why I call it therapeutic art and not art therapy because it's just an exercise of mindfulness and expression and absolutely nothing more clinical than that. And anyway, this is going to be just as much for me as it can be for you. Now, the very first class, we're going to focus on ourselves, who we are, our past, our present, and our future, our positives, and our negatives, and try to piece together a better understanding of ourselves. It's a sort of an exercise of emotional mapping, and these are going to be the supplies that you will need. You'll need one sheet of watercolor paper, watercolor paint, watercolor paint brushes, uh, artist tape, and you're going to need like some sort of strong wooden board. I'm going to be using one of my um, old canvases that I, I mess around with, so it's, it's up to you. Any sort of hard surface essentially. And you're going to need a cup of water. <laughs> All right, see you next week! Hello, welcome. This is my very first art assignment for my very first series for the very first uh, artwork. Yeah, okay, you got the idea. <laughs> so let's remember what materials that I asked you to bring for this particular lesson. So you're gonna wanna take your masking tape and tape the watercolor paper to the hard board or surface and try to make as clean and as straight of a border as you possibly can with it. And the reason why we do that is because watercolor paint is a obviously very wet medium. And when you soak a piece of paper, no matter what, it's going to warp. So that's why we tape it down. Remember what I said last week, we're gonna talk about ourselves, our past, our present, and our future. And I know it seems a little bit counterintuitive to not start with our past, but we're not going to start with our past. We're going to actually think about our future. Not only are we going to think about our future, but we're going to think about what we are afraid of for the future. Now, negatives are a little bit risky sometimes because it's very easy for humans to focus and dwell on only the negatives. And it's really, really easy, especially right now, to think about what we're scared of and what we're worried about for the future. And when we dwell on only negatives, that's actually really unhealthy for us. However, when we ignore what we're afraid of, when we ignore the bad things that happened to us in the past and when we ignore all of the stuff that's not working out for us that's also not good for us so we do have to give ourselves time to address our fears and especially if we are dwelling on it it's important for us to get all of that out and this is a wonderful way to get all of our fears out on a piece of paper and make something beautiful with it so Let's think about what we're afraid of for the future, something that hasn't happened yet. But once you have that in your head, I want you to try to think of some kind of weather. Now I say weather rather than a storm because some people might think a clear, blue, sunny, cloudless day feels a little depressing. Or, you know, you could think of the tumultuousness of 
of a storm, a, a big downpour, or a lightning storm, or a snowstorm, or a hurricane, or a tornado, whatever you can think. Just something that pops in your head. It can even be just the dull, flat, uh, cold, clammy, cloudy weather. Just something, anything that pops in your head that you attribute to the fears that you have currently about the future. Once you have that image in your mind, then you're going to want to paint it. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do, this was from my first attempt at doing this video, but I guess you didn't need to know that. You take your thickest brush and you get it as wet as you possibly can and you soak your piece of paper. This is a technique that often watercolorists and other artists use that is called wet on wet painting. And the reason why I'm making you do wet on wet first is because our future is unknown right now. It's not something that has yet happened. It is just something that might possibly happen. And that is difficult to control. So wet on wet is probably the hardest thing to be able to control. And I really don't want you to try to control what image is actually coming out and then you completely soak your brush again and you can use the same brush or a different one and choose a color and try to make it as wet as you can and just go at it don't think about it just make it happen you're gonna be doing stuff on top of this anyway so it won't matter see this this is already kind of puckering a little bit and that's okay it'd be so much worse if i didn't tape it down all right that's enough You've seen enough of me scribbling about. I'm going to keep working on this and I wish you the best of luck. Until next week. Hello, welcome back. It's part two of the Knowing Ourselves series and the materials that you're going to need are pretty much more or less exactly the same as last week. So this week, I'm asking you to still think about the future. Uh, and instead of focusing on what we're afraid of, what we fear about the future, we're going to focus on what we hope for, what we look forward to. Things that haven't happened yet, but things that make us excited about continuing on. And even in our darkest days, if we really sit down and try to focus on things that we would like to happen, everybody has something like that. You dig deep and really think, what are the things that I would want out of life, out of my future? And then, instead of thinking of a weather like we did last week, I want you to envision a, some kind of landmass or some kind of landscape or some kind of uh, outdoor scenery. Try to match it with things that make you feel at peace or make you feel excited or adventurous or um, giddy, you know, things that attach to the hopes that you have for the future. And once you have that image in your mind, now we're going to paint on top of this painting. So I'm going to start with the larger one, just like I did last week. And I'm going to do something. It's very similar to wet on wet, but it's more contained in a sense, I guess, than just making the whole piece of paper wet. So I really love and find peace in the forest, especially the Pacific Northwest forest, which is just like completely and utterly wild and just magnificent. So I'm gonna take my very wet brush with no paint on it, and I'm going to just kind of make the shapes of trees, more or less. You can also, if you were envisioning maybe the ocean or the sea or some kind of desert area that where you would see a horizon line, you can take the wet brush, wet paint brush, and draw essentially a, a straight line to create the horizon line and paint from 
you know, top down. If you're thinking of more like um, mountains or something like that, you can do something a little bit more similar to what I'm doing here with the trees. All right, and trees, um, they're not always pure green. I think I'm gonna start with brown. I'm gonna make it very wet. Still do this whole wet on wet. And if you can see here, I'm not gonna lift it too much. There's still a sort of a lack of control. The, the paint is following the, the drips of water that I've done so far. And even the water itself is creating really interesting shapes with the already pre-existing paint that you did last week. Now I have a bit of brown. I'm gonna put some green. All right, so you can see my beginnings of a tree here. Um, I don't want it to drip too much. You can try to be a little more controlled if you want, but again, it's not necessary. If it drips a bit, then it drips and that's fine. Well, good luck and I will see you next week. Hello, welcome back. This is week three of our Knowing Ourselves art lesson. And what's particularly exciting about this week is that we are completing the first section, which is the section where we're talking about our future. And next week, we're going to be going into where we'll be talking about our present. Yeah. The first week, I asked you to think about your fears for the future. The second week, I asked you to think about your hopes for the future. What else is there to talk about, I guess? Well, balance. To be focused on only one thing or the other thing, as I mentioned in the first video, um, is really unhealthy. It creates an imbalance. What I'm going to ask you to do is we're, we're going to focus on creating a balance between our hopes and our fears. So let's reflect on what the materials are going to need. Well, pretty much exactly the same as last week. I want you to give yourself a moment to look at your painting and what it has turned into. You can see that the weather part, which was my fears, is kind of dominated by the trees, which were, which were my hopes. So in this I'm going to take all of the materials that I've been working with, the watercolor, and I'm going to try to create some kind of balance. Now, you don't have to try to be like, okay, this was weather, so therefore I need to put more weather. You could if you wanted, or you could say, all right, I see the color palette. I see what, what kind of ended up happening here. I'm going to try to do a little bit down here. And it's probably gonna end up a little bit darker, but that's okay as long as it sort of blends together and develops more of a balance. So try not to think too much and just follow what your eye is telling you to, to do. So this one, I am not going to tell you to do any particular wet on wet or wet on dry or dry on wet, whatever the case may be. I want you to just kind of feel it. The first time that I painted this, I kind of let it become as wet as I possibly could. And I then just let it drip just to see what it looked like. So I think I might do the same thing, but the other way, like upside down, just to see if I can get the same look that I had initially. Next week, what I'm gonna ask you to bring is, well, we're not gonna use watercolors anymore. No more paint brushes. What you're going to wanna bring is obviously your painting, what, however it turns out, and the painter's tape. And you're gonna want some kind of markers, colored markers of some sort. I would recommend you just getting a, any kind of multicolored markers that you can get at the grocery store or that you have lying around or at a craft store, uh, what have you. So, all right, try to find that balance. And I, I look forward to seeing you next week. Hello everyone, welcome back. This is uh, week four of our Knowing Ourselves series. 
and I already tried to film this and my phone decided to crash so that was fun hopefully that won't happen again <laughs> anyway so obviously we've talked about our future what we are afraid of what we fear about the future what we are hopeful about the future and then we try to find some kind of balance now we're going to switch gears a little bit and we are going to talk about our present what is exact what's happening right now in our lives you will need the painting you have been working on you're going to need painter's tape or masking tape and if you would like you can have a pair of scissors as well i'm not going to be using scissors but if you want to be a little bit more finite and fastidious than i tend to be then you scissors by all means you're going to want some kind of um saturated rich color kind of markers of any kind and you're probably going to want some kind of book to write something in a pen a pencil whatever <clears throat> you can also just think about it you don't necessarily have to write it down but it will help you're going to want to cover your painting with painter's tape essentially you're going to just be trying to create these tiny little um, gaps of space that you can see the painting that you've worked on coming through because all of these this tape is essentially protecting the painting that's behind if you want to make this this action of putting tape down um, a little bit more purposeful then you can try to think of a shape of some sort that you can attribute to the movement from your present into your future so if you feel like typically your your actions have been kind of like going in all different kinds of surprising directions when you thought it was going to go in one direction straight line kind of like mine then you can do it that way if you feel like it's kind of more like a spiral um, you can do it like that or like a uh, zigzag mountain or whatever the case may be. So obviously you're seeing me, I'm taking off the piece of paper and I'm just physically ripping it off like this because I am not fastidious whatsoever. So once you feel like you've got some really cool, interesting shapes coming out and you feel like, okay, this is good. This is the part where you're gonna want a piece of paper and a pen because what I'm gonna ask you to do is think about the negatives, just like we did with the future, but the negatives of what is affecting you negatively right now. So I wrote a list, Leth lethargy. I am a pretty lethargic person, very low energy. Finances, that's always a pretty significant stressor for most people. Toxic neighbors, and of course, bigger things like the coronavirus that will, that will definitely not change for a while. Once you have your list, I want you to then associate those things they can be very specific or general, just like what I did. And then I want you to think about what that makes you feel. So finances makes me feel anxious, I guess. Toxic neighbors makes me feel just worn down, probably just sad, maybe a little bit. The coronavirus makes me also feel a mix of sad and anxious. Lethargy makes me feel I don't know, apathetic, I guess. But once you've got all of those emotions associated with those things that you're, are your stressors or your negatives in your life right now, then I want you to try to think about a color that you associate with those feelings. So for example, toxic neighbors, um, brownish green, like a vomit green maybe, yeah. Makes me think of toxicity. Lethargy, I think blue. All right, so then I'm gonna color a significant portion of these empty spaces, if not all of them, with all of the different colors that you have um, imagined associated with the feelings that you have that are negative. I'm going to stop right now and finish this afterwards. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next week. Enjoy. Hello, welcome back. It's week five of our Knowing Ourselves series, art series, and 
wow, week five. We're literally halfway through the entire series. We're at the halfway point. You guys, we're halfway to figuring out ourselves. Maybe not, <laughs> but you know what I mean. All right, uh, so let's get started. I had already tried to previously film this. So I had shown what it looked like before I put the tape. What I had done is I had taken off the painter's tape when we did the, uh, when we addressed our negative, the negatives that have been affecting our lives currently in our present. And I tried to show what it looks like um, here. It, it kind of had a more rigid, uh, stark and a bit of a, I don't know, shocking effect to the eyes. And at first I was like, I don't know if I like it. Kind of makes me feel not so great. And I was like, oh yeah, that's kind of the point. So what we're going to be talking about today is the positives that are affecting our lives. And for some of us, that's going to be a lot easier than just thinking about our negatives. That's something that we all want to dwell on, obviously. Um, for others, it's a little bit harder because sometimes when we're having a particularly bleak year, it's really hard to find what's so great about it. So try to think about it. And I wrote a list last week of the negatives that are affecting my life. So I decided to read a few positives. Uh, one thing I wrote down was a supportive husband. So I was like, I always think of Jad as a sort of a burgundy or wine color. So I put wine. I have Another positive thing that is affecting my life right now is that there are more creative outlets than there have been in the, probably the past five to ten years. Um, I decided to connect that to purple. Uh, I have two healthy and wonderful cats in my life that make me very happy and sometimes very angry. And so I decided to connect the color orange, which is my cat May's color. Again, if you think about the positive feeling that you connect with those things and then you can think of a color if that helps. It's up to you. The first thing you're going to do after you've thought of the positives and the colors that you want to put onto your painting, you're going to get your tape. And I'm going to see if I can try to do some more organic, less sharp. I don't know if it's possible. I probably need scissors. I don't have scissors right now. They don't have to have smooth lines and they don't have to be all the same shape. I don't really necessarily, you could have the same kind of rigid geometrical shapes that I ended up doing with the the negatives, but I kind of want the negatives and the positives to look a little different. So I'm going to try to do that. So they're a little, a little odd, but here's some new pieces of tape that created some odd wonky shapes, but I think I kind of like that. So yeah, I'm going to start coloring in parts of it. Now, I really don't want you guys to use my anxious, like rushed coloring as an example. I want you guys to, to really sit down and meditate. I want you to think and meditate about the positives and the things that you're grateful about your life at the moment instead of rushing through it because it's really important to actually, I don't think it through. Next week, you're pretty much going to want all of the same kind of stuff, your, your piece of artwork, your painter's tape if you want, that's kind of a, might want to bring it and just see if that's something that you want. Um, and the markers and that's it and that'll be the last of talking about our current state of affairs <laughs> all right i will see you next week hello everybody we're back it is week six we first addressed what are the negatives that are impacting our present and then we addressed what are the positives that are impacting our present. So can you guess what's going to be next? We're gonna find a balance. So obviously what I've been asking you to do is take the painter's tape and put them down in interesting shapes 
and ooh, I think this is upside down. Not that it really matters. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting shapes and then filling them in with the colors that you attributed to the feelings that you matched with the positives and negatives that are affecting your life in the present. You can see the parts where I was just kind of rushing it because I am uh, one of my uh, probably worst attributes is the fact that I'm a little impatient. So I was just kind of rushing through and taking off. If you're very slow and patient and work with the paper itself, you're not gonna do as much. But the thing is, is that I actually kind of liked it. I felt like it added another dimension to what was already in existence here. What you're gonna need for today are your markers. I got the fancy markers again and I got the cheap markers again. So those are the ones that I used. And if you want, you can use painter's tape again, but it's not necessary for what we're doing today because what we're doing today is not, it's not gonna be very challenging because if you look at your, your painting and what it's turning out, you can look at it and see what does your mind see an imbalance of. And I can see these large chunks here where your eyes immediately are drawn to so how do you create um, more balance? Well, I would probably put larger chunks on these sides more purposefully, and they don't have to be either positive or negative. You're just going to want to create a balance. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to try to create more, probably bigger chunks inside of this piece so that my eyes don't aren't drawn to one particular area or the other but can move around this entire uh, piece so here we go i remember there was one time in high school where we had to think about if we were the type of people that focused on the present on the past or on the future because Oftentimes, our minds always think that we have to be one thing and one thing only. And I think the reason why we do that is to navigate the very, very complicated world a little bit easier. It's just when you focus too much on one thing, if you think my past was always so wonderful and my present is terrible without acknowledging the, you know, the negatives that impacted our past or the positives that are impacting our present, then what ends up happening is misery <laughs> and obviously we don't want that i'm gonna stop this now i'm not gonna have you watch me try to create a balance this is what it's turned out so far it's obviously turning it into a more abstracted image rather than um the initial forest look that it was and i i don't i think it's kind of cool it's unexpected and it's um different and it's interesting so for next week we are going to be talking about our past and uh, for that all you need are three things your painting that you're working on now a white pen and a black pen be prepared to think about your past all right i will see you next week Hello, we're back. Now we get started on our past. We'll talk about the materials. We have the painting and two pens. That's it. Nothing more than that. And it's definitely not going to be very complicated. You have a black pen and you have a white pen. You can use any kind of black or white pen, a, a marker, a, a Sharpie, a whatever. The white pen might be a little bit harder if you use uh, any type of like white marker that might be harder to see so it might be good to get maybe like a gel pen or here right here i have a an acrylic painter pen or even like i said controversially a uh, white out pen that might be a little tougher to work with that kind of is harder to control and we need control um, and it can chip off pretty easily so if you're going to use that just try to be a little bit careful with how you use it. So why are we using black and white? Because typically that's how we view our past. 
okay, it's concrete, it's happened, there's no way that's ever going to change. Sometimes, unfortunately. So what we would have done in the future and then the present, we started out with the fears and the negatives. So I think it goes without saying, we're going to start with our bad memories. I, I feel a little bit reluctant to go ahead with this sometimes because some of us have had some real tra traumas and if you haven't really given yourself any chance to try to work through those bad memories then maybe now is not the time to reflect on them necessarily i'm not saying that you should repress those memories that's actually incredibly unhealthy but for the sake of this project uh, we don't want it to get completely overridden with the really heavy stuff and we're going to have future projects uh, that will hopefully address these particular types of traumas, so please stay tuned. But if you want to address those, this is your painting, please do. I'm not going to stop you. Now, if you haven't had any horrible traumas in your past, and I really certainly hope all of you haven't, then that's fine. We still have negative me bad memories of our past. And yeah, some of us has had a fight with a sibling. Some of us had a bad grade. Some of us fell and scraped our knee. We all have those memories. We all, we all remember something that we cried about, even if it was young, even if it was seemingly now as, a, as an adult, if you are an adult, insignificant. They're still negatives, and, they, and you still have them implanted in your mind. Once you have those memories, you might want to consider writing them down. And when you write them down, you don't have to, but it's just, you know, for the sake of just having it down and, and not, like, being completely swept up with these memories, but making it concrete on here, black and white. Huh? Uh, you write the memories in a pithy way and you start it out with, I remember. I remember when, I remember how, I remember, etc. So I'll read you a few of my more minor bad memories. Um, I remember when the dog bit my face. I remember my panic attack at a volleyball, pra at volleyball practice. I remember getting kicked off a train. <laughs> I remember being followed in Florence. I remember my mom's breast cancer. I remember 9-11. I remember that refugee's child scar. I tried to give you good examples of a really small thing to a really big thing that I have, that didn't really necessarily touch my life in a, in a personal way, like 9-11, um, or even something that had to do with another person's trauma. But I still saw it and it still affected me in a, in a negative way. Um, so once you have your list, and it can be as long or as short as you like, you're going to want to choose a black or white pen. It can be either. I recommend that you use a color that isn't going to be as striking, that is probably going to be more easily faded into the background because essentially what we're gonna try to do is have the more popping color. So in my case, I think white would probably be harder to spot than black. I think the eye will catch the black a lot easier. Um, but in your case, if, if you have a darker painting, if it ended up being really dark, then the white might be a lot more popping than the black and it will be easier to catch. So maybe choose black in that case, but I'm gonna choose white. And one of the reasons why is because in the subtractive pigmentation colors, white is the absence of all color. Well, but additive colors, like colors that are created by light, black is the absence of all color. So it could be either or. So once you've chosen your color, <coughs> you are going to want to start writing your sentences in the blocked out bits that you use to put tape on. Try to avoid the, the pretty prism kind of colors that have been developed and just write I remember statements. So, I remember face. So, it's probably gonna be hard, like I said, you, know, you can see it. 
I put, I started, where did I start? I started here and it ended right here and I just moved down here and then right here. I remember when the dog bit my face. And then keep going. If you start seeing a, a shape being developed uh, from these sentences, then that's awesome. That will be really cool. And you can go ahead if it overlaps a little bit on a color. That's fine, you can go over it. Again, this is up to you. If you wanna to try to avoid it and try to keep that particular aesthetic, then you can. If you don't and you just, it's okay that you overlap, it's, it's your painting, it's your decision. It depends on what pleases your eye. This is, after all, about you, right? All right, I'm going to keep going with my memories and I will let you go and I will see you next week. Hello, we're back. It is week eight of the Knowing Ourselves art series. You're going to need the painting that you worked on, that we've been working on all these past weeks, and you're gonna need one of the two pens that you didn't use last week. So last week we talked about our past. And that was the first week that we addressed our past, and we talked about the bad memories. So I chose white for my bad memories, and you can see I filled it out. I kind of followed the, the sharp geometric shapes that were created by our present, and because I just thought it, it looked kind of cool, but you definitely don't have to. Um, you can do it in a more uh, organic, smooth, rounded way than I did, and, and it also just depends on what is more pleasing to your eye and what works for what you've done so far. But this is what I ended up doing. Um, here are some basic memories. I kept it very short and sweet. I remember blah, 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 blah. So this is how it's turned out so far, and I'm just, yeah, I, I kind of love it. But anyway, we don't need to know how I feel about it. We take the opposite pen, in my case it's black, and we look at the negative memories, or the bad memories that we've had written down so far, and we're going to reply, respond to them, reply to them. So, for example, I remember depression. So, uh, you know, trigger warning, I'm going to talk a little bit about depression. Um, I've experienced depression a couple times. It's definitely uh, runs very strongly in my family genes. It's, it's usually for me a more hormonal imbalance. And when I was 12, I was going through puberty and I had a very extreme hormone imbalance that happened that caused me to dive headfirst into a, a very deep depression even though I was so young and I had no idea what was going on. And so obviously that's a pretty bleak um, memory and I, I just remember things being really cold and things being really um, uh, dull. All the saturation seemed to be sucked out in a weird way. Yeah, that's, that's probably the, the biggest thing I, I remember from that time. And it's, it's hard to think about the positives about what happened during that point because it's so easy to focus on how awful it was. Every single day at going to school, I would just feel like anxious and, and upset and sad. Uh, until about, a, right about now, I would say, probably around March, um, late February, early March, something crazy happened to me. Uh, where on the way to school we were in this area which was especially bleak area because there aren't very many buildings nearby it was just a bunch of like a freeway overpass um, all of these roads it, it was kind of ugly area where we had to pass through in order to get to our school and my sisters and, and me and there was this tiny plot of land, completely unclaimed public land, that was just pure wild grass and stuff like that, why, um, weeds and things, uh, that for the most part had been like um, sectioned off by chicken wire. And all of a sudden, after such a bleak winter, it was just a pop of yellow, just a pop of so much yellow. It had completely been filled with daffodils. And I had never noticed daffodils before until that point. 
and I just remember thinking that these flowers are so incredibly happy and like it, it was kind of a, a strange feeling to experience during such a, a time when I didn't really understand even what happiness was anymore and uh, it just gave me like a, a small glimpse of joy and I would always look forward to seeing it during the short period of time that they were in bloom and so that story, the point of me telling you the story, is that I look at the sentence, I remember depression, and I'm going to write in response to that, but I remember daffodils. So here is, I remember depression, but I remember daffodils, right there. So then, like, you can think of um, other things that are completely have nothing to do with that negative memory, but you can think of something positive that was a totally different time frame, totally different experience, um, just to counteract that particular bad memory. And you can write over it, you can cross over the white and the black, you can do whatever you think is aesthetically pleasing to your eye, but try to keep the black in the brightest area, or at least the color that you chose, in the area that's gonna create the highest contrast so that you can remember and you can your eye is drawn to that more than the white or the black, <laughs> than the opposite, the bad memory color. Ugh. Um, so yeah, I think that probably does it. I am going to keep going and finish this and I, what you're going to need next week, which is our final week, you might want to bring in every single material that we've used, that we've worked with so far. And to reiterate, the first week we did the future, which we just worked on watercolor. We had watercolor paint with various sizes of, of soft bristle brushes and a cup of water. The second week we had uh, various colors of markers and we also had the painter's tape which I'm less inclined to think we're going to use it but you can bring it just in case. And then finally we talked about the past uh, which was the black and white pens. So bring everything, be prepared, I'm not saying you're going to use everything but just in case you might bring everything for next week next week's final lesson and conclusion of this particular painting of knowing ourselves and i cannot wait oh my goodness i can't believe it Whew. all right well good luck and i will see you next week hello welcome back uh wow Guess what, you guys? It's week nine of Knowing Ourselves, of the Knowing Ourselves series, which means this is the very last one. Congratulations, somehow we all made it. <laughs> nine weeks of this, that's over two months. Wow, okay, this was a, quite an involved piece of work, wasn't it? Well, that's because we're involved. I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm in a mildly good mood because the sun is shining. I went to the park today. My students were in a good mood. I was in a good mood. Everything was peaceful. And I don't know, spring is springing. It's, it's great. This is what I came up with so far. You can see the bad memories and the good memories all here, all responded to. You can see the present uh, sharp, angled, you can see the background of the future, you can see pretty much everything, everything's on there. Our past, present, and future, and what else is there? Well, let's think about what the theme of this entire project has been. What have I been saying all the time? Creating a balance. Because the fact of the matter is, the good and the bad 
all of those aspects are a part of our lives and we cannot ignore one or the other. We cannot focus on one or the other. We have to acknowledge that they both exist. They both have huge effects on our life and we have to find a way to, in a very healthy manner, create a balance, acknowledging it all while moving forward, um, anticipating our fears while you know working towards our hopes for the future if we i already have written down the good and the bad memories do i need to find a balance between the two of them no not really i would like to find a balance with everything i want to find a balance of our future and our present and our past so if I now have been doing all that hard work of, of uh, addressing my past and, and working through it rather than ignoring it, which I had a tendency to do, um, then I need to find a way to create a balance of all three. If my future in this painting is kind of taking a backseat, then I need to work on my future. The materials that we've used throughout this whole series was watercolor paint with various size soft bristle brushes and clean water. Also markers of many different colors for our, our present and the black and white pen for our past. So if you, unlike me, feel like your past is not very dominant, then start working on that instead. If you feel like your present is taking a back seat here, pick up those markers, start coloring away. But for me, I think my present is very, very present. <laughs> I think my past is very present. And my future is taking a back seat. So I'm just going to try to remember what I did. So what did we do here? We did weather for the, the fears for the future, and we did a landmass for the hopes for the future. And what I'd done is I had done some sort of drippy storm, and I did trees. So, and the thing is, you don't even necessarily have to do that. You can look and say, hey, you know what? I want some more warmth and some more vibrance into, the, into this painting, so I'm gonna add more yellow or oranges or reds, or vice versa. Or you can say, hey, you know what, I am imagining something else for my fears for the future or something else for my hopes for the hopes for the future. So you can do whatever you want, but um, it, it's all up to you. And, and for the present, if you want to take your painter's tape like you did before and map things out, you can do that by all means. But that's not necessary. You can do however you want to critique or, or go over. So what I'm kind of doing, just not really thinking too much about it, is I'm covering a little bit with a, a wet yellow and then I'm going to go over it with the whole concept of wet on wet. If you remember all the way back to the beginning of the series, the concept of wet and wet is to take water, go over your painting and then go over it again with more water. One thing is, ooh, that's kind of cool. Some of the cheaper ink from the present is starting to bleed through. If you don't like that, then be careful, but I, don't know, I like it. I don't know. Can you see it? It's right here. And the thing is, is that since I didn't use an ink pen for my past, I won't be smudging it very much. It's not going to mix in with the water. It's just gonna go right over, which is fine. But be aware that if you used an ink pen and you wanna go over it again with any sort of like watercolor or water, it's probably gonna smudge it, which again, is not the worst thing. Just try to keep a balance. If you feel like you're a past is fading away a little too much and then there's a uh, focus too much on another aspect of your painting like the past or like the present or the future then go over it again until you feel like your eyes are creating a nice balance
I think that's enough. This is a short episode because that's all we really need. Create balance in your life. Think not only about your future. Think not only about living for the present. Think not only about your past. Think not only about your positives or your negatives, but acknowledge that all of them, every single aspect of these things are important for our lives and create something beautiful and vibrant and, and for you. I really hope you enjoyed the series like I did. It was definitely eye-opening and enjoyable and yeah, I, I quite liked it. So wish me luck and I wish you luck and I will see you in two weeks.